Okay, so here, chapter one, section one, our objectives are to learn the basic vocabulary of business organizations, and we're going to compute financial responsibility of business ownership based on ratios and percents. So we've got the key word there of ratios. What is a ratio? It's a fraction, okay? Don't make it any more complicated than that. We're going to be using fractions to find out how much ownership people have in a company. Okay, here are 10 key terms that we're going to use in this section. Uh, some of them may look familiar to you. Some of them may be new. But as we read through the section, you will see these words come up. And some of them that you may not be familiar with, you may want to write those down to make a little note for yourself. So it says to convert a decimal to a percent, we want to multiply the decimal by 100. What you probably more commonly seen, say I have a decimal number of 0.6, and I want to turn that into a percentage. Instead of multiplying by 100, you can move the decimal two places to the right. That does the same thing. So 0.6 is the same thing as 60%. And then vice versa, if you're given a percent and you want to turn it into a decimal. So if somebody owns 75% of a business, to turn that into a decimal, I would move the decimal two places to the left or divide by 100. And that gives me 0.75. So to go from a decimal to a percent, two places to the right. To go from a percent to a decimal, two places to the left. Okay, so we want to set up a rate or a fraction here for this problem. So our number in the denominator is always the larger number. So in this case, that would be the total money that's been invested. So the total investment goes in the denominator. So in this problem, the total money invested is $240,000. Now we're looking for a piece of that or a part of that. In this case, what Michelle invested. So her investment would be the numerator. And in this problem, that is $15,000 that she invested. So now I have a rate or I have a fraction of 15000 over 240000 So I would just put that in my calculator to divide. 15000 over 240000 gives... 0 0.0625. And so again, when you do regular math, a regular division, this is going to give you a decimal answer. Well, they just want this in a percent. So to convert from a decimal to a percent, we move the decimal place two places to the right, or we multiply by 100. So that means Michelle owns 6.25% of the company. Try to do this problem on your own and read it very carefully because they're trying to throw a little twist in there from the last one. Can anybody get an answer they want to share? Yes. 87.5%. Okay, and I'm interested in how you arrived at that answer. Well, first I done the um, 20,000 divided by 100,000. Okay. To get 0 0.125 and I turn that to a percent. 0 0.125 turned into a percentage, which was 12.5%. Okay, so you found that Kyle owned 12.5% and then subtracted that from the 100% owned by everyone to find there were 87.5% left. That is one correct path. Anybody do a different way to get there? Yes? Yes, so if we know Kyle invested 20000 
then how much did the other people invest? So another way you could work this problem is you could say the $160,000 invested in total minus the $20,000 invested by Kyle gives $140,000 invested elsewhere. And then you set that up by dividing 100... Go ahead. Divide 140,000 by 160,000, which gives 0.875 or 87.5%. We have the total number of shares of stock in the Bulls Corporation is 650,000. Mike owns 12% of the shares. How many shares of the Bulls Corporation stock does he own? So we set up a rate. It's the number of stocks that Mike owns divided by the number of total stocks and that's going to be equal to the percent of shares that Mike owns. And don't forget, we have to convert that percent to a decimal. So when I set this up, how many stocks does Mike own? We don't know. That is what we are looking for. So we'll let that be a variable for our unknown, call it X. Over, what are the total number of stocks in the corporation? 650,000. And that's going to be equal to the percent that Mike owns, which we know is 12% making that a decimal as 0.12. Now, I want to get X by itself. X is being divided by 650,000. So I'm going to multiply by 650,000 on both sides. And so that tells me, when I multiply by 650,000 over here, that goes to 1. That tells me X is going to be equal to... Seventy-eight thousand. Okay, three partners are investing a total of nine hundred thousand dollars to open a garden and landscaping store. Their investments are in the ratio of two to three to five. How much does the partner that invested the least contribute? So we see two to three to five divides that into ten pieces. Now, the way that they would want you to do this algebraically is let's say that the, the cost of one share is X amount of dollars. We don't know what it is. It costs X dollars. The first guy bought two of them, so he paid what? He paid two times X. The second guy bought three shares, so he bought or he paid three times X. And then the last guy bought five shares. He paid five times X. So two times the cost of one share plus three times the cost of one share plus five times the cost of one share would equal the $900,000 that was invested. So now you've got an algebraic equation set up. 2x plus 3x plus 5x equals $900,000. Now this one works out kind of nice and evenly because they gave us a really nice ratio. Okay, so if I combine these like terms, 2x plus 3x plus 5x is 10x equals 900,000. So I divide by 10, 90,000. So that, that tells me what? That tells me the cost of a share is $90,000. Was that the final question? No, we want to know how much did the partner who invested the least invest? No. What was this? This was the cost of buying one share, one piece of the company. And we know the guy that invested the least, he bought two shares of this company. So we would do two times the 90000 to find how much he paid. 180000 Absolutely. So just a little pocket change for the guy. Just 180 grand. There you go.